Well, last week, we began this series called Moving Forward, Living Our Best Life One Step at a Time. And what we looked at last week was this idea of faithful living, that God, throughout Scripture, is defined as being faithful, as being constant and always there, working for us, even when we might not sense it or see it but that we're also called in our living to be faithful in different ways and in the ways that God might be calling us in this season of our life. So we're asked to walk faithfully with God as disciples, but we are also called in certain seasons of our lives to be faithful parents, spouses. We're called to be faithful in our work, in our, uh, in our caring for others, in our compassion for others. But that, that can be very overwhelming if we don't start taking small steps to begin with. And so in his book, Dream Big, Think Small, Jeff Mannion talks about how we can begin taking those small, faithful steps forward in whatever we are trying to to live our better life. Certainly there's an umbrella there, but we know that if we don't start with one thing, we're never going to accomplish all those things. But we know that taking faithful steps, doing certain things consistently, constantly, day after day, week after week, year after year, can get a little tiring, right? We can get wore out. If we don't see results, we are kind of an immediate results culture, right? We want to see things happen right away. And so I mentioned last week about, you know, how at the beginning of the new year, we often make all these resolutions and we, we set those goals, but sometimes we set them far too high and we think, well, you know, I'm just going to make a decision to lose weight this year and I'm going to lose 40 pounds and then, you know, two weeks in, we haven't lost 40 pounds yet, and we start thinking, well, this is getting a little hard. You know, I'm gaining two, I'm losing two, I'm, you know, this is a battle, maybe I'm not going to win, and we, we end up giving up because there's just too much. And so today we're going to talk about what we need in order to be able to consistently take those steps forward. And as a pastor, one of the complaints I think I hear most from people is something that you may be very familiar with. And often when I'm counseling people and they just seem to be having a very difficult time, the first thing is not normally about the difficulty they're having, but that they are so exhausted that they are so tired. And we all have reasons to be tired. For some, it might be work. You know, we're constantly go, 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 never taking any time off, never not kind of setting time aside. But for others, the tiredness is different. You may have an infant child at home that decides, you know, that 3 o'clock every morning is the time He's going to wake up. Or you might have three kids at home and you're trying to balance getting them to to school and to uh, daycare and get yourself to work and you're still being up at 4.30 in the morning. Or we might be tired because we're grieving. We've had significant losses in our life and, and it's hard just to even get up each day Or you might have a morning like this morning or what we're going to have the next couple mornings where it's literally going to be below zero as the high temperature. How many of us were like, yeah, I just want to spring out of bed this morning and come to church? (laughs) Even the pastor had problems getting out of bed this morning. (laughs) It's a reality. But we're tired. And of course, around here, you know, shorter days and... Longer nights doesn't help either, but 
when we get tired, there's a physical tired, there's an emotional tired, but there's also a spiritual weariness as well. And maybe some of you have felt that. When it feels hard to just take those even small, constant, consistent steps forward. But if we truly do want to commit to a life where we are going to love and serve faithfully over a lengthy period of time, as Jeff Mannion says, we must become specialists at refreshing our weary spirits. Okay, last week I gave you a a pop quiz. It was one question. I'm going to do it again today. So if you think you know the answer, just shout it out, okay? What do you think that we can do? What is the one thing that we can do to help refresh and restore our weary spirits? Give you a clue. It starts with an R. Ah, very good. Rest. Now, we hear that a lot. You know, when we get sick, when we are going all the time, you know, someone like a well-meaning pastor will say to you, you know, you really got to look out for yourself and you got to get some rest. And if you're like me, you hear it from a spouse or a good friend or somebody else and you're like, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll get my rest. But I don't even know if we know what that means in this culture anymore. Because we battle against this idea that in order to have value, we have to be productive. And that we need to constantly be producing something. That we need to constantly be showing people what our value is. And that really runs us down. Because not only does it affect us and put stress on us throughout most of our regular working days, but then when we do actually get some time off, maybe it's a vacation, you know, maybe it is uh, some, uh, a long weekend or whatever, and we think, okay, now I will finally have time to rest. And maybe that first night you do, and then you wake up in the morning, and I don't know about you, but all of a sudden that guilt, kind of sneaks in a little bit of, oh, I really should be doing something, you know. I don't feel very productive today. I, well, maybe I should just swap the to-do list. So you take your work or parenting or other to-do list and you swap it with the home to-do list. Well, you know, I got to I gotta go to the bank and I got to go grocery shopping and I got to fix this and I got to do that. And before you know it, you've used up that whole day and there hasn't been one ounce of rest. So how do we begin to find a rhythm where we can truly work and be productive, but also be resting and do that in a guilt-free, shame-free way? Because as we'll see in Scripture, and we heard today, that rest is not just recommended, it is required. Exodus 20, if you go there in your Bibles, you will see that that is the chapter where we find the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses. And in those Ten Commandments is this one about Sabbath that says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to your Lord. You shall not do any work. Now, there have been a lot of different interpretations of this, and some people have taken them to the extreme. But I wish there would be one word in there that would help this to be more specific. That on the Sabbath, we are to honor God, to focus on God. We are not to work, but we are to Rest. Truly rest. To forget about those things that are bringing about the stress and the anxiety and some of the other things that are making life much more difficult. 
to actually take that time and set it aside and say, I'm going to do this for myself, for my own health, and to do this because it's what God has asked of me. Now, how many of you have ever tried to carve out Sabbath time for yourself? You, you probably don't call it that, but how many of you try each week to carve out some time that is just for you? All right, that's not many, folks. It's not an easy practice, first of all. You know, we forget that Sabbath is a gift from God to all of us. And it's one that we need. We can't afford to neglect it or reject it. Because when we do, we run ourselves until we burn out. How many of you would say you have, at one point in your life, experienced burnout? It's not a good feeling. Because all those things that you may have at one time been excited about, those new steps that you were taking forward, and all of a sudden, you just can't even think about getting up and doing those things. You know, you just you get to that wall, and you hit that wall, and you can't get over it anymore which leads to emotional weariness, which leads to spiritual weariness. So we need to find ways to, if you will, refill the tank, as Jeff Mannion talks about, of finding those ways to work a rhythm of, of work and rest into our lives so that we can truly be fed for that journey. And Jesus understood this very well. And he taught it to his disciples. And we have that very brief story in the Gospel of Mark today where we hear about Jesus sending the disciples out for their first real mission in the world where they are to go and to heal and to cast out demons and to help people understand the good news of Jesus Christ. And they go out and they do this really intense ministry together in pairs of two and they come back and they are all excited but then they look out and they see the crowds that are coming. They see the work that is still there to be done. And you can imagine they just take that deep breath and they're like, okay. But Jesus stops them right there and says, okay, you've done this great work, but now it's time for a rest. Come away with me for a while to a quiet place. It says deserted place, but I kind of like quiet place because we can't find too many deserted places around here anymore. But go away to a quiet place where you can spend some intentional time just reflecting and thinking about this ministry that you've just done, preparing yourself to get back out there when the time comes. And that's what they do. They follow Jesus to go away to that quiet place. And Jesus did that all the time. He would go off and pray by himself, and then he would come back and be ready for the day. And maybe that's something you need in your life too. Maybe it's morning, maybe it's evening. Maybe it's a time that you just set aside to take that small step of opening yourself to what God is calling you to do. But Jeff Mannion reminds us that it often takes time and experimentation to learn a life-giving Sabbath rhythm. So we're going to fail. We're going to start a practice that we think is going to be life-giving, and maybe a couple weeks in it isn't. But we need to keep trying to be inventive, to be creative, to say, well, maybe part of this is working, but others are not. And Jeff Mannion, who's a pastor, he talks about how Fridays are his Sabbath day and not Sundays. But maybe yours needs to be Monday or Wednesday or Saturday afternoon. There's no set specific period of time, but it's about starting 
those Sabbath practices. So maybe it's, you know, scheduling a meal with your spouse or significant other. Maybe it is uh, having that morning five, ten minutes to yourself and having a cup of coffee. Whatever it is that can kind of set you and set your priorities for that day is a Sabbath act. And we need to work up to that whole day because if we say, oh, we're going to take a Sabbath day, well, a lot of us will go and do that to-do list that we have. You know, we'll, we'll set aside a couple of seconds and then we'll be like, okay, now I got to go again. And by the end of the day, we need a, a break from our break. You know, where we go away on vacation, you need a vacation from your vacation. That's not what we want to do. We need to start taking those small steps so that eventually, you know, three or four months from now, you have that one Sabbath activity down and you can begin another. And eventually stretch out that Sabbath time to when you can actually make it a full day. But he says, practice, fail, improve, learn, and grow. Keep at it, knowing that the rhythm of work punctuated by rest was designated and designed by your Creator for your benefit. And we do need to keep that in mind. That this requirement of rest is not a punishment. It's not an obligation but it's for our benefit, our blessing, so that our life and the faithful way we're living it can continue to bless others throughout our lives. So I challenge you today to write down one thing that will become a Sabbath activity for you beginning this week, one that will get you on this road to having a better rhythm of work and rest for yourselves, for your family, for your friends. It will be a blessing. Thanks be to God. Amen.